I will pass it on to the um, panel. Zach, if you want to get started and introduce yourself. Yeah, for sure. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Zach Gross. I am originally from Toronto, um, up, in, up in Canada, a couple hours north of Pittsburgh. Um, I graduated in 2016. Um, and while I was at Tepper, I, my concentrations were, uh, I was in the entrepreneurship track um, and focused in quantitative analysis. My background before Tepper was in engineering. Um, and then after Tepper, uh, I worked at the Boston Consulting Group in San Francisco for a few years. Um, and then since the end of 2018, early 2019, I've been at Twitch Interactive, um, which is a video live streaming service for those who are not familiar um, as a part of Amazon. Um, and I hit all of them. No, favorite type of memory, um, I would say, is uh, doing the, the entrepreneurship uh, capstone project in the Bay Area. Um, it was an amazing capstone uh, where we had about 12 to 15 of us maybe um, who were based out of the Carnegie Mellon campus in Mountain View, um, just south of San Francisco in Silicon Valley. Uh, and we spent our days sort of going to different VCs, startups, um, various companies with alumni in the area and just learning more about that whole world. Um, and it was just very interesting to both see what was happening down here um, and just get a chance to bond with all of my classmates. Katie, if you um, want to go next, or yeah, Zach, if you want to pick someone. Oh yeah, I was, I was just going to pick someone because I, I don't know. Um, Katie, why don't you go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Katie DiCapria. I graduated from Tepper in 2017. Um, a, a unique part of my Tepper um, kind of career is that I started in the part-time program and moved over to the full-time program. So I have a view on both sides of, of part-time and full-time. Um, I graduate, like I said, I graduated in 2017. Um, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, so I didn't go too far, but um, I'm sure I'll be able to explain why I chose Carnegie Mellon and, and, and what got me into CPG. Um, I interned at General Mills um, in, in, in the summer of 2017. I interned on Cheerios, which was an amazing experience. And so um, received an offer and I happily came back, joined the company full time. I just hit my three year anniversary with the company. So now I'm living in Minneapolis, I'm currently the um, leading the Pillsbury franchise, which is a really exciting opportunity and uh, have been loving my time at General Mills so far. My uh, favorite Tepper experience, lucky to have several. The first thing that comes to mind though was an amazing spring break trek that we took sailing around the British Virgin Islands. There was um, 10 sailboats and we actually used it as an opportunity to really like test leadership skills, which like truly happened, but overall like a phenomenal experience. There was like 80 of us, 60 of us that went and just an amazing time of traveling and um, really getting to know our classmates. In, in in the Caribbean, which is amazing. So I'll pass it off to you, Ohima. Awesome, thanks, Katie. Hi, everyone, my name is Ohima. Um, it's very nice to, to have you all here tonight. I am class of 2016. Um, while I was at Tepper, I interned at Kraft um, during the merger with Heinz. That was the summer of the merger. So that was a very interesting uh, time to be there. <laughs> Uh, in Chicago um, on the Kool-Aid brand. So um, coming out of Tepper, my concentrations were uh, marketing, strategy, entrepreneurship, and organizational behavior. Um, and I actually got recruited by Mars, um, now Mars Wrigley, uh, the confectionery brand of Mars, uh, branch of Mars um, in their graduate leadership development program. So I've been at Mars now um, about four and a half years. I'm really enjoying my time. I've done uh, a few different roles at Mars um, from internal consulting to um, supply chain management to uh, now marketing on M&Ms. 
Um, so really excited to, to be having this experience. My background, um, I'm actually not from Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania or anywhere near. <laughs> I've, I kind of moved around a bit. Um, originally from Ghana, um, ended up right before coming to, to business school, um, I was working for an online higher education company. Um, so I had a, like a student finance role there before coming to Tepper. So that was kind of my background and pivoted to marketing. Um, I would say my favorite Tepper memory, it's just the camaraderie that I feel like we shared at Tepper. We were just talking right before the call started about the master's lounge. And um, I remember, uh, you know, some of the, the tougher classes and just that camaraderie that you feel when you're all going through the same thing. And, you know, some of those um, study sessions or just being in the master's lounge and being able to find, you know, several other classmates who are kind of going through the same thing and help each other. So. Um, I really miss those times and uh, yeah, it's good to be here tonight. And I'm not sure who to pass it to. <laughs> I think that's all of us as far as panelists. Yeah, I think that's all panelists. So I think we'll get into some questions for the panelists. Um, so we have a couple to start. I guess the first one is just, how did you become interested in the industry and how did you sort of like get into it? Um, we can start with Zach. Sorry, lost my mouse. Um, video conferencing problems. Uh, so for for me, um, I guess I have I have two industries to <laughs> to, to pick from. Um, consulting uh, first off was sort of a a, a default second MBA um, for lack of a better term. Um, so it was more of a not quite sure what to do yet. Um, I'm going to just continue learning um, and try and keep doing that. Uh, so that was, that's sort of a, a less interesting one. Uh, more interesting uh, is what I guess I'm, I'm doing now, um, which is in working at Twitch, I'm working in a corporate strategy role and it's in, in media and entertainment. And for me, choosing that was just a, a combination of a high growth, uh, high growth area coming at sort of a unique, I would say, bifurcation of how people consume media. I just think it's a very interesting time um, to be here, um, to, to be working on live, uh, live media when right now we consume sort of live and video on demand in a similar way. And there's no real reason why that has to be the case. It kind of isn't because if you're like watching The Bachelor or something, you're probably like tweeting or in like a group chat with your friends at the same time. Um, I know that like when there's like a big hockey game or something, like I'm definitely in a group chat. Um, so it's just interesting um, to work at a company that's sort of at the, at the forefront of that. Um, so that's what I was most interested in. Um, and that's combined with like a similar secular shift that's going on in like the creator economy more broadly in the internet of paying people for the stuff that they actually create, um, which hopefully is a trend that continues. I mean, we've seen it with, for folks who are familiar with the patronage model, we've seen it with Patreon, um, we've seen it with things like The Athletic and other things that are, that are popping up for uh, individual creators to sort of unbundle a little bit from the rest of the group. Um, so, Sorry, long answer, uh, but those are the things that, that made me, me interested on the, uh, on, the, on the media and entertainment side. Um, I guess I'll pick who to pass it off. I don't like going first. Uh, I'll pick uh, Opima this time. I was, gonna, I was gonna say I can take it. <laughs> um, so what made me interested um, in this industry is, is my interest in marketing. So I knew that I wanted to go get my MBA and focus in marketing, um, which led me to therefore CPG. So what I mean by that is um, in undergrad, which I did at Loyola Marymount in LA, um, I had wanted to uh, be a business major with a, kind of like a double emphasis in management and marketing. Um, so I always had this interest I didn't get to add the marketing emphasis um, just for like, like a lack of time, for, for lack of a better term. I ended up studying abroad for a semester in Germany and um, the classes offered 
it, it just wouldn't jive. I would have to add a, a, like an extra summer term. Um, and I was on scholarship there. So I, I just did my business major focused on management. And I knew that I wanted to go to grad school. Um, my mother has an MBA growing up. I watched her, you know, and saw the opportunities that, you know, she had access to and the types of jobs she was able to do. Um, and I had a curiosity about marketing. Um, so when I was coming to Tepper, that was my intention. Where I learned more about it was actually at, um, well, through my own research and then through the intensive uh, that the consortium has. So I'm a consortium fellow and there's this program um, before school begins called OP, orientation program. Um, it, it's basically a, um, like a, a career conference and also a learning intensive um, for a few days. And that's where I focused my time and energy on absorbing and learning um, more about what it meant to be in marketing and what that career path really looked like. Um, did the, went to verticals, learned from panelists who are in the field. And that's when I began to realize, okay, brand management is more or less what I thought it would be um, from what I'm learning here and asking questions. And um, so that's what kind of solidified for me at the beginning of business school that yes, brand management is what I want to do. Um, I'm a very creative person. I wanted something that kind of allowed me to be uh, an entrepreneur within a bigger company, um, essentially. Um, so, and then the, the internship further solidified that. So I, I just feel like, you know, from, from undergrad, it started with a bit of an interest. And then um, at the beginning of Tepper, uh, through my exposure with consortium, that got solidified a little bit. I went on the marketing track um, in first semester um, at Tepper. We toured several CPGs um, in New York um, and tech, tech companies too. We went to Google, a few others. And so just absorbing and, and um, really learning what, what is a day in the life? What do you really do um, in, this, in this career choice? That's what kind of solidified it for me. Um, so hopefully that answers the question. I guess I'll pass it to Katie. Thanks, Rahima. That's awesome. Um, you may hear my dog snoring in the background, background so forgive him if you hear it. Um, so I worked at a few startups in between undergrad and uh, pursuing my, my MBA at, at Tepper. And it was at one of those startups where I, was, I had the fortune of working alongside um, some brand managers who left Heinz when Heinz was purchased by 3G. Um, they, they left Heinz and we land, I got to work with alongside a few of them. I knew even in undergrad, I always wanted to be in business. I always wanted to be a business leader of some kind, but I didn't know, um, I didn't know if I wanted to specialize in corporate finance or I didn't know how to do it, frankly. And I just knew I, frankly, I just wanted to lead a business. I didn't know how that was going to look until I worked alongside these brand managers and I saw in person how they they led cross-functional teams, developed brand strategy, created a vision, um, kept everyone kind of like, kept the ship going in the same direction. And I observed what they were doing and I was just really interested. It just really fit who I, like my natural skill set and what um, got me excited professionally. And, you know, in, in full candor to get into CPG brand management, um, you need an MBA. Um, it's still a, a it's still a door that's necessary to get into this industry. So I pursued an MBA with the sole objective to get into CPG brand management. And so um, I went to Tepper um, with this goal in mind, and I knew that I would have to, um, you know, I knew from my first semester interviewing for internships, uh, I only recruited with with CPG firms. So I was really open to the, the possibilities of where I would go geographically. I was interested in, in anything. I just knew that I wanted to be in this industry. Um, what really appeals to me is I'm a generalist. I work alongside every function. I have partners in logistics and in, in operations, um, finance, sales, um, creative design, marketing communications legal, the truly the list goes on, but like off the top of my head, those are the people I work with on a daily basis. 
And I know a, a lot about all of those functions, but I'm not an expert in any of them. And that really got, kind of gets me excited. I know a lot about a lot. And I think that that's really fun. Um, and then further, I get to truly develop the strategy for Pillsbury and be the, the voice of the brand and represent the brand and the growth strategy. And so um, I think that there's very few industries and careers that allow me to be both in the details deep like I can in brand management and also developing the strategy and the vision and the future of this brand. And so um, that's kind of my path of how I, how I was attracted to this. I did also pursue like Ohima, the marketing track in my first semester, we went traveling and went on site to visit just to get a feel. Um, but the internship really solidified that this was the right career path for me. Great, um, thank you. So I will ask the next question um, and Zach, you will not go first. We're gonna go backwards, so you'll go last this time. Um, so the question that I have is, um, what is in your mind, the thing you're most proud of that you've either done at work or you know been a part of, whether it was like you yourself or a broader team? So Katie, we'll start with you and then uh, Ohima and Zach. Um, I, there are, I mean, you know, I could, there's cool stuff. Um, the, I'm proud of, you know, I could take this kind of a personal lens. I can take this as a professional lens. On, on more personal lens, I'm really proud of the developmental opportunities I've been able to give other people. And so I've been able to manage um, more junior folks. I've been able to manage interns. And so one of my more proud memories is that I was managing an intern last summer and she was developing a strategy for how to convert our, our General Mills snacks category, snacks brands into being uh, more sustainable. So what can we do from sourcing or packaging um, or comms to be to show up in a more sustainable way and to give back to the, the world? And frankly, she was, she was struggling. I mean, she, she kind of like misstepped a little bit. Um, and my ability to coach her and kind of get in the weeds with her um, and, and really help turn around her summer um, and, and have a successful internship truly was one of my more proud moments. I mean, if I'm just talking like from a personal lens and who I am at work, um, leading my team and leading um, this intern was, was a really proud, proud moment of mine. Professionally, like how it would show up to a consumer on shelf. Um, I have launched products, I have renovated products. Um, I was managing Lara Bar. We've, we've been able to reposition that brand um, and make it more relevant for our consumer to compete more on a taste first message. Um, that kind of strategy work to turn around the, the business trends really get me excited that I'm very proud of. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, it's how do I lead, lead people and, and, and develop teams that I'm most proud of for sure. Awesome, Katie, I'll go next. Um, so th I, that's a great question. I, I would say I'm proud of a couple things. Um, one is definitely the, the development that I've seen in myself and in um, uh, an intern that I managed uh, just last year actually, who um, went above and beyond um, on a project that was actually a little bit, probably broader scope than it, it should have been for her. <laughs> and um, still absolutely killed it, grew a lot in the process, um, accepted her offer and is now at Mars um, and just continuing to mentor this person as well. So um, that gives me great joy to see the growth that takes place through that process, not just in the other person, but also in myself. Um, but one thing that I'm probably most proud of is um, just the out of the box thinking and the introduction of new um, strategies and new processes that I've been able to bring to Mars. So one example is when I was in my seasonal marketing role, which was right before this M&M's role um, at Mars, we have kind of core, which is the brand uh, marketers and brand managers. And then you have the seasonal team, which is, you know, a marketer runs an entire season. So the season is your brand, so to speak, but you, you manage the whole portfolio. So all brands within that season. And I was the Valentine's day marketer. Um, so uh, within that sphere, when I first came into the role, um, one of my first tasks was, you know, do an innovation ideation session. And um, 
In order to do that, I needed to understand, kind of dig into the data, understand the white spaces that exist for us to play in, in the category and where the category is moving, what's growing, what's declining now, what the consumer trends um, are, are dictating for us. And through that, through those insights and the ideation session, I, I began to realize this season is kind of, is kind of changing. You know, it's not um, it's not your grandmother's Valentine's Day anymore. It's it's a, it's a season that's really um, speaking to more people and even people that you know might have traditionally been excluded. And I discovered that actually the segment that's growing and growing the fastest was actually this what I called non-romantic gifting, right? So not your traditional red heart boxes all the time, but stuff that's more casual gifting for friends or stuff that's more leaning towards singles awareness or Galentine's Day. That was actually, this was in 2018 that we, I'm talking about these insights. So I introduced for the first time um, in Mars history, to my knowledge, um, a, a Valentine's Day strategy where the biggest bet was actually non-romantic gifting for Valentine's Day. And I'm very proud of that <laughs> um, just because it was it may it, it was when I when I would bring it into the room or talk about it. First reaction was like, oh, you you want to go there. OK. But the fact that the data um, was what was dictating this decision um, when you look at the insights um, and, you know, all roads kind of pointed in that direction. It had just taken, I guess, me to come in and, and see it. And it was actually, if, if you looked at the data, it had been moving in that direction for a while. Same with classroom exchange. That's another one that, you know, we had to pivot and rethink. And I was pushing the envelope there. Like, what are we gonna do with classroom exchange? We can't just do what we've always done. So just that, that, um, that out of the box thinking, that challenging of the status quo, um, that I that I tend to do. Um, another example was coming up with a new way to have ideation sessions because our traditional ones weren't working for my season, which was particularly challenged being the smallest season, um, therefore not really an investment vehicle for the company. So we weren't really getting, if we had a complex project, we weren't gonna get the capital necessarily, um, but then still having to hit all of the same KPIs and hurdles as a season like Halloween, which was seven times our size. So a lot of the ideas that we were bringing and chartering to try and innovate and bring this new thing to life, they, they were complex because they were necessary to, to make a dent in the category. But a lot of times we were hitting a wall because they weren't hitting profitability margins or they weren't, they required capital, which we wouldn't get. So, you know, I propose that we that I, you know, do a completely different ideation type of session rather than getting everybody in a room and kind of giving people our runways and telling them, okay, think in terms of this, these types of occasions, come up with these ideas. You've got influencers in the room, you've got agency, you've got the cross-functional teams, R&D is there, finance is there, and everybody's come, coming with like, you know, pie in the sky types of ideas that we then have to pare down. I proposed we start from the bottom up, come up with a budget, give it to our suppliers and let the suppliers ideate. What can you make for me that's creative? Here are some mood boards, all of that still, but what can you make for me within this budget? So that when we charter the things, there, there's a higher likelihood that they'll be approved and that they'll be profitable. So I flipped it on its head. I called it Shark Tank because <laughs> it reminded me of that, you know, that business model. And now that's been that quickly spread throughout the company and people were asking for it and saying they needed it in their spheres, et cetera. So um, those are just some of the things that um, I encourage you all to, to think about as you go into your industries and into your jobs, just really challenging the status quo where there isn't a process, established one, where there is um, a lot of continuation of things of old. You know, big ships take a, take a long time to turn, um, but that doesn't mean that you should second guess your out of the box thinking because it's probably going to work. Great. Um, I feel like I've been a, a bad friend on Valentine's Day now um, from not participating <laughs> in the non romantic gifting. Um, Some product. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll keep an eye out for it, uh, February 2022. Um, 
On, on, on my end, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short here. Um, I, I think the two, I really liked Katie's framework, um, but both like the, the professional versus personal side of it, um, they, they sort of interleave for me. Um, but I would say when I can see uh, folks who are on my team uh, presenting good, solid new ideas um, to executive leadership, um, knowing that, you know, these are folks that I'm, I'm working to develop. Um, that's a, a huge thing for me. Uh, I focused on it uh, at, at Tepper. I did some, some TA work uh, while I was there. I always love um, that piece of it. Uh, so getting the chance to do that uh, at Twitch and at BCG, uh, running teams, um, and then seeing, seeing those people succeed. Uh, so that's anything from being able to run meetings with uh, senior folks at the company to decide what to do um, in critical decision making uh, at Twitch or at BCG, you know, finding companies and being involved in multi-billion dollar mergers, um, things like that, that, that make the newspaper. Um, I think those are sort of the, the two things that I would, that, that I would point to um, on that end. I mean, it sounds like Y'all have been doing some amazing things over the last couple of years. Um, so on the similar line of your past experience, um, what is the best career advice you've received that has helped you? And maybe we can start in the middle this time um, and do Ohima first and then Zach and Katie. Best career advice. I would say um, one of the best pieces of advice that I've gotten is, it's kind of ironic. Uh, it might be a little controversial, but I'm gonna say it. Uh, don't, don't surrender like too much of yourself to, you know, any company or any, um, you know, uh, career or, or sometimes there's, there's this imbalance that people can have um, and think they have to like, you know, um, kind of not sacrifice themselves, but like, you know, um, you can, you can give so much of yourself, um, to a company and a career thinking that that's the only way that you can get ahead. You have to like really kind of slave yourself out to this company, um, so that you can, you can be seen or so that you can have, you know, and then one day you'll, you'll get the reward of that and then sacrifice your real life in the process. And then you look back on years of a career, um, a career that was that piece of your life, but then did you enjoy your life? That part is important. So um, I once heard that at a conference from someone who was you know, um, of the older generation and experienced and, you know, higher up in terms of, of pedigree and, and title and, and things like that. Um, and that was just one of those, like, don't regret your life type of pieces of advice that I always took with me. Um, so I guess it's just, it pairs down to that work-life balance. Um, have, your, have your career and your job play its role in your life, but not become all-consuming of your life. So I guess I'll pass it to uh, Katie, or is that, I can't remember. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll grab it. Um, so uh, I, I think for me, you know, the, the best piece of advice that I got was just be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, and that's manifested a few different ways for me. Um, so, and, and basically like a, the, in addition to being comfortable with being uncomfortable, it's that growing pains are real um, and it might be uncomfortable, but that's how you grow. Um, not necessarily to grow, you need to be uncomfortable, but just because you're uncomfortable doesn't mean you're growing. Let's just, let me just make that distinction totally clear. Um, but uh, the, the way that that's manifested for me uh, in a couple of different ways, before I was at, at Tepper, I was focused on uh, supply chain and operations. And I kind of thought that's what I'm gonna do uh, when I finished my MBA. Um, and that's what I already know. I'm good at that. I want to learn more about that because that wasn't necessarily my background uh, before. Uh, but once I got to Tepper, it became apparent that there's 
a lot of other routes um, that you can take and having four years of experience in one area for what's going to be a 40 year career, probably um, 40 plus year career doesn't necessarily mean that you need to continue on that route. Um, so for me, it was finding something that, or finding more things that I was legitimately interested in, even if that was going to make me uncomfortable, um, that that's okay. Um, and growing sometimes is difficult and not to necessarily just take the, the easier, more comfortable path. Um, if there's a path you're excited about, don't be afraid to take it. And for me, I have some context here. Um, I've been on three years of dramatically declining businesses, unfortunately. I just rotated Pillsbury. Pillsbury is not declining, thank goodness. But I've been on three years of, of tough businesses. And um, the best career advice I have received and frankly implemented is separating business performance from personal performance. Because just in line with Ohima's point of, or Ohima's um, um, advice, I'm not sacrificing too much of yourself to work. It's the same, it's, it's very much uh, related where when business is down, when, when time, you know, when you're having a tough year, you have to work a lot harder, unfortunately, for not as much of a, it's not as exciting, it's not as much fun. You just gotta work a little harder. And um, my first year, even year and a half, it's probably giving too much, just uh, diminishing returns at some point, just working my tail off um, high anxiety and just, just not really feeling my best. And then I, frankly, I got pregnant. I, I couldn't do it any longer and I needed to prioritize my own health. And I realized I can put in a healthy workload, a healthy amount, a, a, more of a stable, um, of effort during the week, or I could put in double that. And frankly, my results are going to come out kind of similar. So I've really learned over the last year, I would say how to how to balance my effort, how to prioritize where I'm putting my time and my energy. Um, same with my team. And um, it's keeping, you know, my weekends are happier, my evenings are happier. Um, but the, it came from a director and she really gave me this like clear, very clear advice, separate your business performance from your personal performance. They are not the same. Great, thank you. Um, Jordan and I definitely have a couple more questions if time permits, but I'm going to shift over to the Q&A just because we got some really great questions. Um, and I am going to go a little bit out of order just as an FYI to the attendees because we're getting a handful of questions about kind of the elephant in the room, which is Tepper. Um, and I think it would be great to hear from um, these alumni about their experiences. So um, the first question that we got for Tepper was what initially drew you to Tepper and why did you choose the school? So. Um, Zach, I'll have you go first this time since you haven't gone first in a while. Yeah, no, that's totally. Um, and I can, I'm, I'm looking at the, the Q&A um, scrolling as well. So I, I may hit another question during this yeah, um, because, because one of the reasons why I, I picked Tepper was the analytical focus. Um, so that's something that, that I knew is sort of like no big secret, uh, a trend of how business decision making uh, is going, um, that everything data driven decision making is not going anywhere. It's here to stay. It's one of the things that was pioneered at CMU like, I don't know, 30 years ago or something, um, but it's very much entered as the, the mainstay everywhere. And I think that um, that that's one of the reasons why I chose Stepper. And that's one of the, the things that continues to allow me to be successful um, in my roles. Um, just hitting on, on one of the other questions here of how that has helped me in, in, in my career on the analytical focus side. It's that it allows me to have the credibility when I'm working with senior leadership that although I'm in a business focused role, I have data engineering staff, data analysis, data analysts um, on my team, and I can speak reasonably coherently um, about what work they are doing and convey that to senior leadership, um, whether it's at uh, companies while I was working at, at BCG or now um, at Twitch. Uh, so I think that's been, that's been a key for me. And that was one of the big reasons why I, I chose Tepper in addition to it being a small community, um, which I, I enjoyed as well. I think it's a fairly small from MBA program standards, although still 
a couple hundred people. So it's not, not tiny. Um, I'll pass it over to whoever wants to, to pick this one up. Uh, Katie. Uh, very practical reasons for me. Uh, one, I knew I needed an MBA. I wanted to go to a, a top tier MBA school to pursue my goals. Um, second, uh, my husband went to CMU a couple of times. And so he is a very much a CMU guy. We were both based in Pittsburgh. Um, so I was drawn to it just by my connection to it. Um, third, I was working at a startup in Pittsburgh. I started in the, in the part-time program. I wanted, frankly, to hedge my bets. I didn't know the startup was growing dramatically year over year. I wanted to see how that would play out. I wasn't ready to leave it, but I also didn't want to stall my career trajectory any longer. Um, it kind of gave me the best of both worlds. And then finally, uh, the culture of Tepper is incredible, truly. The tight-knit community, you've probably heard it a ton through what you've been exposed to so far at Tepper. It's 100% true. My best friends have been at Tepper. Um, this is just incredible community. So for those reasons, um, Tepper was just the right fit for me. Yeah, and I would echo a lot of what Katie and Zach already said. Um, for me, I knew that I wanted to go to a top tier um, school for my MBA. Um, I wanted to go to a place that I wasn't gonna get lost as a drop in an ocean, you know? <laughs> so I, I liked the, I appreciated the smaller class size. Um, so I could really um, appreciate um, and benefit from that community aspect and the networking benefit of going to MBA. Uh, going for your MBA. Um, and then I just wanted the academic rigor and the focus on the analytics. All right, I will grab the next question. Um, this is just in general um, for any of you who this relates to, but how do you recommend a career switcher prepare for prepares for a brand management recruiting and network. So how would they sort of prepare for switching their career into brand management? I, I wanna start by saying, if you're interested in brand management, it's not so much of a career switch. Um, pretty, you know, we have people who are in consulting, we have people who are in finance, supply chain, marketing, general management is general management. So you can actually come to this career from a lot of different backgrounds. I know General Mills recruits from a variety of backgrounds. So I personally am in the camp of saying, if you're pursuing brand management, you're not necessarily a career switcher. What I wanna focus on is, the, is how to prepare for recruiting. Um, there I left no stone left unturned. Um, I worked my tail off on networking. I leveraged the Tepper network extensively through LinkedIn and through the, uh, through our own, like through career services, like any connection I could find. Anyone who was working in CPG, I reached out, I had a phone call, even if it's 15 minutes, introduced myself, tried to understand what their comp company was all about. Um, I prepared like bananas for National Black um, Career Conference, for all kinds of, for, for any of those career conferences or interviews. I can still I can still recite some of those con like some of those answers in my sleep. Um, so I prepared like crazy. So um, there I leveraged the career services. My career counselor was integral, um, and then my my peers. So my second years, whenever I was a first year, um, I did countless mock interviews with them. Learned a ton from them about their their experience and how to approach interviewing. And then um, as me as a second year, then I gave that back and I did count like probably one a day of mock interviews to first year. So that tight knit community really came through in the, in the recruiting process. You gotta learn from others who went ahead of you. These questions don't really change year to year. So if you have your extensive list of questions, you pre prepare like crazy and you come in buttoned up um, with energy and excitement for that career path, like you're gonna get doors open for you. So, um, Preparation was key for me in get in landing the internship. Yeah, I would echo that. One of the, the main resources that I used was people who'd gone before me, right? So whether that was um, having conversations, like I said, I, I, I went through consortium. Um, I remember distinctly a few mentors who um, I talked to, you know, they would 
um, send me over like uh, prep documents almost where it's like, here are some of the types of questions that entail the typical brand management type of interview. You know, our cases in interviews are different from consulting cases. Here's the type of what they're trying to get at. They're trying to understand how you would think through the problem. Here's how to think through the problem. You know, like just talking with those who've, who've, who've gone before. So I think networking and not being afraid to um, utilize your, your Tepper network, also utilize LinkedIn. Um, I, I still have people to this day who reach out because they're a third, third removed connection um, and they, they wanna understand maybe what it entails to be in marketing because they're thinking about going into marketing or switching careers. You know, these people I don't know who are, who are work in a different field, um, but I, I, I welcome it. And, and that's how everybody out here is, is trying to better themselves and trying to understand and learn what they don't know. So don't be afraid to reach out. I know sometimes it, it can be a little daunting depending on your personality type, um, but you know, LinkedIn is a powerful tool. Um, even some of the clubs on, temp on campus. So when I was on the, the board of the marketing club, you know, we would we would sit and, and hold office hours for mock interviews. We also had documents for interview prep and um, to kind of frame your mind in in, in the um, in the in in terms of being a brand manager or an aspiring brand manager. Teach you how to think about you know um, some of the things that the interviewers and the companies are most interested in. So just utilizing all of those resources and. Um, talking to people. I think that's, that's your, your biggest one. Oh, and the last one I will mention is brand camps. If you're interested in CPG and you get invited to brand camps, go to them. They will wine and dine you. They will uh, show you a good time. You will learn a lot. It's an intensive, typically maybe two day, uh, three day type of, type of thing. Um, you meet a lot of people from a lot of different schools. You get to hear from the CMO, from different leaders in the company. Um, they impart a lot of wisdom and a lot of career advice on how to think through it. And the brand camps, the notes I took in those sessions and the things that went and you know permeated into my brain helped me for the next interviews or the next conversations or just throughout my career. So brand camps are a very powerful um, thing to take advantage of as well. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna ask the one last question and if we can just keep it pretty brief so that everyone gets to have their questions answered um, before we go into questions that have been directed to one or more panelists. Um, for all three of you, what was the one biggest takeaway message that you learned from your MBA that you still use and is still helpful to you in your day-to-day -day work? Um, so Katie, if you wanna go first. There's so many. I really think about this a lot. Like, there are a lot. Like, general, like Tepper was a really transformative experience for me. Uh, I mean, a, a, truly, a lot of them, a lot of them come to mind. Um, I, I think what I'm going to answer with is like, um, I learned how to do really big assignments fairly quickly. Um, Tepper is very rigorous. And so a skill it taught me is how to just figure out, a, just figure out a path to get a problem done in much sooner, much less time than I would have before Tepper, um, just by survival. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I can get through a lot of workload at General Mills because of my time at Tepper. Yeah, I would, I would echo that. And I think that's just a function of the MBA being an extremely broad um, degree. There's everything from analytics to organizational behavior to like just anything. I would say things that I learned at Tepper come up like multiple times a day. Yeah, I would say the biggest lesson that I learned at Tepper that follows me in my da daily life is a lot of alumni said it's going to be about, it's going to be more about the things you learn in the people classes than the things you learn in the kind of like technical analytical skill classes, I think that becomes more and more true the further up in your career you get. So I learned I learned what they were talking about pretty quickly in my career. Uh, 
Um, okay, well, we have a little bit of time left, so I think we can. Um, there's one question specifically about um, leadership development programs that I thought would be great to just answer. Um, if like there's a lot of opportunities um, around that, it's specifically for international students, but I think just um, Ohima, if you could just answer sort of like how you um, decided on a leadership development program or even OSS, and that's what she's going into as well. Yeah. So I did not start out targeting LDPs. <laughs> I wanted to, um, you know, I was open to it, but I, I was kind of more going towards like, yeah, I want to go in as an ABM, you know, um, straight marketing role. Um, but yeah, marketing is one of those disciplines that lends itself to um, broader work and marketing coupled with Tepper, you can do anything. Um, so LDPs, you know, kind of found me. Mars, I interviewed on the spot and National Black had a few uh, follow-up interviews. Um, the LDP itself, I think the biggest benefit is giving you that, that, um, that unique perspective. So as a marketer now, I, I am cognizant of the fact that I have a different perspective than um, probably a lot of my peers at work because I did I spent almost a year doing a role that Mars calls um, IE, industrial engineer. So when you say that, it's like, whoa, you've been an IE. Wow, you know, like, like that's a completely, you've gone to the make side now. You've gone to supply. A lot of marketers haven't had that. Um, if you get a chance to do a finance rotation, people may not have had that. So it's just in terms of building your personal brand, which I think you're always doing, no matter what your role or your discipline is, um, it just brands you differently. It's not uh, anything that you're, you're better than anyone else, but it does give you a, a different perspective, a different approach to problem solving, a different approach to things that you take into your consideration um, when you're looking at an issue or when you're looking at um, launching innovation, which I do now. You know, so. Um, if you have the opportunity to broaden your scope to include LDPs, I would encourage you to do so. Um, it depends on the company, whether or not that gets you anywhere faster, let's say. A lot of them promise that. Um, I think you should go into it with the intended, you know, um, with the intention of those benefits, those intangibles that I just mentioned, rather than I'm going to do this because it's going to get me to a directorship two years prior. Um, it may, it may not. But the, the experiences you will have and the perspective you have are branding you in a way that people are seeing you as probably a good fit for more than you, than you thought you would be, if that makes sense. Yeah, and just to touch on it very quickly, um, I would echo what Ohima said. I did not start out targeting um, LDPs. But um, I think it's a really great opportunity to kind of become a jack of all trades before you specialize, because in a lot of ways, you don't know what you don't know, especially if you do consider yourself to be a career switcher, you're coming from something you know you don't want to do for your future career and going into something else that you, you know, hopefully do want to do. But I think leadership development programs are a really unique opportunity to kind of keep that same type of learning that you'll get at Tepper, where you're touching a lot of different things and, and learning a lot of different skill sets. Um, but to answer your question specifically, I don't know um, if there are, um, are a ton of LDPs that um, you know sponsor international students. I think from what I understand about other industries, it's um, there are some industries that sponsor more than others, but it's you know very specific to that individual company. Um, but if I'm wrong, please correct me if anyone else knows on the call. But um, I do think just as a general note, LDPs are generally fewer and farther between um, than a lot of other roles. So, you know, just put the feelers out to as many as you can find and um, hopefully they'll sponsor. Uh, there's, you know, pharma companies, CPG, um, construction, manufacturing. There's like a ton of different industries that you could have an LDP and it's just that the specific roles might um, not exist in like surplus amounts. Um, so I will go on to the next question. Um, this is for Katie and Ohima. Um, the question is, have you considered a marketing role or growth role at smaller firms where um, you're taking a greater responsibility versus working at some larger corporations? Um, and why slash how did you make that choice? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, I came to General Mills largely for 
the classic uh, CPG uh, education that they give you. And, and I'm sure Ohima can feel it too at Mars. Like the rigor is really high. Um, we are trained by, you know, by sheer necessity to succeed. And, and it's a great learning experience. I have learned a ton. Um, and this experience on my resume is really attractive elsewhere. So I get recruiters contacting me weekly. And so I'm confident that I can apply this role, my experience at General Mills for a promotion or a bigger scope role um, in a smaller company. Um, for me, I want to get to a certain level and have certain kinds of experiences at General Mills before I make that jump. But yeah, I can certainly see myself three to five years leaving in order to get it to landing a, a higher visibility, bigger scope job for sure. Yep, I would I would echo that exactly. I think um, there is uh, a unique skill set benefit to starting off your career at a bigger firm um, that will give you like your classic CPG MBA um, in brand in, in brand management. So um, there there are certain you will also have the safety net for lack of a better term, of everything that's established and has been working well in a big CPG company so that you have room for failure and room for trial and error and room to be green and learn, learn from more experienced people, you know, um, but you also have your lane because you have the support of like a, a company that has a lot of headcount. So you have the support of established cross-functional partners that know their role and they're gonna get you this and they're gonna help so that you can be green and learn with some support. Um, I think there's a benefit to starting off there and kind of cutting your teeth in, a, in an environment that has that support for you and has the, that will give you that, you know, um, that luster on your resume, like for you to be able to say, you know, I've had these big challenging experiences. I've worked on these brands, you know, and then when you go to a startup, which is also, you know, down the road, I could see myself going from so a place like Mars to somewhere that's more entrepreneurial. Um, you will come with all of that knowledge and experience because you cut your teeth on a brand like, you know, Pillsbury or Kool-Aid or M&Ms, you know, so then when you bring it to a startup where you're going to inevitably have some scope creep in your in your day to day life. A startup is not as well resourced necessarily from a human resources perspective or necessarily even financially. Um, so if you if you if you're bringing with you all of the knowledge um, that you can apply to the startup, I feel like it'll be um, it'll be easier and you'll know what you're doing a little bit more. You'll know how to drive the car, even if you have to wear multiple hats as well, because it's a startup. You're not just going to do this. You might have to dabble in a little bit of finance too, or you might have to dabble in a little bit of other roles that are not part of your job um, just, to, just to keep it moving. So um, that's kind of my approach. I would actually recommend it. Um, I don't have experience doing the reverse, but I feel like it might be harder to um, go from, this is just my opinion, but to go from trying to learn traditional CPG marketing at a startup and then come to a big established CPG company. Um, also because sometimes CPG companies are looking for people who kind of have, you know, those skill sets and they're looking for people who kind of do traditional CPG marketing. It's a lot of like recycling and moving people around within the same industry. Whereas if you're coming from a startup, it can be perceived as, maybe a little bit different. I'm not sure if you really, um, like they may not take for granted that you know um, really how to deep dive in Nielsen or how to do this or how to do some of the things that they would assume of people coming from other CPG. So I would, I would recommend learning at a big firm and then going to a smaller one. Alrighty, thank you all. Um, I know we are almost at time. Um, I do have one more closing question for the audience. If you all have another two or so minutes. Um, great, thanks. Um, so I think something that will resonate with, um, you know, Jordan and me along with um, hopefully all of our incoming students um, 
you know, the, the concept of goal setting, um, you know, when we apply, we share plan A, plan B in one year in five years and 10 years and so on. So um, the question just to close things out is, um, you know, are you all doing what you thought you might be doing when you first entered Tepper and um, how or when did your plans change along the way? Um, if not, because, you know, as we all know, as the panelists and the moderators, you are like drinking from a fire hose when you come to business school, getting so much new information. And that really can kind of shape your career goals as they evolve. So Zach, we'll start with you for the final round and then um, Katie and Ohima. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I would say yes and no, um, cop out answer here. Um, <laughs> I would say that I am doing what I thought I would be doing in terms of working at a high growth company after doing um, a bit of consulting. I had assumed, like I mentioned earlier, that this would probably be in the supply chain operations space, um, but it is very much not, it's very much on the, the growth side rather than on the, the cost and, and op side. Um, <laughs> I, this was, this was plan B. It's, uh, it, it, it's there. Um, so it, um, I will say that it, the thing that, the thing that changed was, uh, really looking at what all of the options were, um, that were available and really just trying to, to push myself a little bit more out of my comfort zone, um, and understanding what all was actually available. Um, and not that it was necessarily, okay, I've already done X, let me like keep down, going down that path, but faster with an MBA. Uh, it was an opportunity to reorient a little bit and find uh, another lane that at least in the short term is more interesting. 100% I'm doing exactly what I said I wanted to do at Tupper and I'm not joking. I'm tempted to find my admissions application because I'm confident that I said that this is exactly where I wanted to be five years later. Um, I, uh, if anything, this exceeds what I was hoping for. I did not think I was going to be able to work on brands like Cheerios and Pillsbury. Uh, I just got this job and I'm still pinching myself that I can work on a $1.2 billion brand, not only work at lead a $1.2 billion brand. Um, I find myself incredibly lucky. This is to me, my dream, my dream career. It's what I went to Tepper for, and I'm so, so grateful that I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do. So yeah, this, and I don't know what my plan B is. Don't know, because I, I hope I don't have to figure it out because this is what I love to do. That's awesome. Yeah, I would say I am in the pinch myself situation too, right there with Katie. Um, I think four and a half years later, I'm like, wow, this is pretty much why I did this. I completely, you know, it, it changed my life. I went from like South University Online, student finance, this is Ohima, you know, like to, I'm uh, one of the marketers on M&M's um, launching innovation. Um, it's, it's quite remarkable. It's what I thought it would be like, what, as far as my intention, um, for why I went to business school. The other layer that I had just in terms of my personal dreams, um, I wanted to, part of the reason I wanted to study marketing and go into brand was I wanted to be able to take those learnings and apply them to my music. So I'm, I'm a recording artist, I'm a musician and a songwriter. And so that's, a, that's my other brand <laughs> is Ohima the artist. So I didn't know what I was doing. I was I was making albums and stuff and um, releasing music, but it's a different music is a whole separate industry. Yes, but there are a lot of I knew there would be things I could learn about launching big brands and managing big brands that I could then apply to, um, you know, a, a smaller brand so far <laughs> of Ohima, the artist. Right. So. And I would say that now, if I if I assess what I'm doing and what my life is now, that's happening as well. So I'm I'm learning at work, and sitting in agency workshops and learning about media and learning um, how to launch big, new innovation, all the way from conceptualization to execution. And there are a lot of those types of things, those types of steps that I'm now applying to my music career as well. So that was one of my biggest intentions with, with doing this whole brand management for my life, for my purpose, right? So 
Um, I'm very, very grateful um, that by God's grace, I'm doing that as well. So I'm glad that it's paying off in that way that I, that I um, had hoped. And then as far as plan B, um, down the road, I want to go do something a little bit more entrepreneurial, like I mentioned. Um, so I can see myself, you know, um, just, just being somewhere where I'm bringing this, what I've learned so far, but bringing it to an environment where um, I can maybe make more of a, a global impact, more of a social impact, more of a, um, like a real life um, tangible difference you know, at a, at a smaller firm that's in a different line of work. I love making candy, but down the road, I just see myself um, maybe being at a startup and then down the road, ultimately, um, I wanna do stuff to, to help um, employ people and to do something that benefits my, my home country of Ghana and beyond within Africa as well. That's amazing. Um... So I know we're a little bit over, so I appreciate, you know, all of our panelists staying on and our attendees as well. Um, I'd like to thank Zach, Katie, and Ohima for their time and their insights. Um, even as, you know, current students, it was really valuable for um, Jordan and I to hear your perspectives, what's changed, what hasn't, you know, the one microwave to two, especially for um, people entering the program in person, um, hopefully in the near future. Um, but Again, really appreciate the time, the insights,